Hi guys, Nick here from Intuitive Tennis. Does the power uh, on the serve come from the legs? And are we actively driving our legs to generate this power? Or is this a result of another action of the body? Well, check out today's video and find out. Let's first take a look at the history of the leg drive. Until 1961, tennis players were not allowed to have both feet lift off the ground on the serve. One foot had to remain on the ground or this serve was called a fault. And it looks something like this. On right handers, the left foot had to remain on the ground uh, while the back foot usually rotated around the body, something like this. The International Lawn Tennis Federation changed this rule in 1961 uh, and allowed players to lift both feet off the ground on the serve. And this rule went uh, unnoticed at first until Arthur Ashe uh, came around. He was one of the first players uh, to have both feet uh, lift off the ground on the serve. In the modern game, all tennis players will land on their left foot after both feet have left the ground, assuming that they're right-handed. And it looks something like this. Some players in the past have actually landed on their right leg after the serve. Uh, Boris Becker, one of the great servers of all time, uh, would land on his right leg. Ilya Nastase was another player who would land on his right leg after the serve. On the women's tour, you had Nav Jana Novotna and Gabriela Sabatini, who also landed on their right leg. And one main reason uh, for landing on the right leg is it gives you a little bit more of a jump start if you serve in volley. See, back in the serve and volley era, players were trying to get uh, to the net as quick as possible and landing on the right leg first, I gave them a faster first step on the way to the net. And I'm gonna try one out. I'm gonna try to land on my right leg as opposed to the left, and let's see what that feels like. So when I attempted to land on the right leg, I felt an immediate loss of balance, and it felt very unorthodox for me. Uh, I can see that if I was going to serve in volley, and maybe uh, with a lot of practice that could have given me advantage. But since the serve and volley era is pretty much dead of players uh, trying to get to the net on the first and the second serve, I feel like this is an uh, unnecessary compromise uh, and you're better off you know, landing on your left leg as a right-hander. It gives the serve serving action a lot more balance. All players will leave the ground on the leg drive with their back foot first and then the front foot. And the simple explanation for this is that all players will throw the ball in front, inside the baseline on the serve. So now when the ball is in front, we simply are going to follow the ball and we're going to lean uh, slightly forward like this. So in this lean forward position, it is impossible to load uh, this back foot. And uh, we got to remember also uh, when the, are the legs are about to come off the ground. Well, the legs are about to come off the ground and uh, when the racket uh, tip is pointing to the ground like this. When the racket tip is pointing to the ground, at that particular moment, the legs are about to lift off. And it also at that particular moment, our body is already uh, going towards the ball because the time frame from here uh, to the ball, the millisecond, so we're already leaning slight forward and this moment our legs uh, will leave the ground. Of course, many tennis players will have different rhythms where they might be rocking from front you know, to back and then back to front, but it really doesn't have any effect of the later stages. It might be helpful to generate more momentum into the swing, but as far as the leg drive is concerned, all players will have the back foot come off the ground first and the front foot will leave the ground last.
The way we generate forward momentum is by simply throwing the ball uh, slightly inside the court. Uh, how much inside the court is going to depend on various factors, but let's just say as long as the ball is inside the baseline, even uh, something like this, this is going to be enough uh, for a body to slightly uh, tilt forward uh, as we approach the ball. And therefore, uh, when we then go up and land, we're always going to land inside the court. I'm going to demonstrate two serves. One serve, I'm going to throw the ball right on the baseline or slightly behind the baseline and you pay attention to uh, my landing position on my left foot and then I'm going to serve one where I throw the ball inside the court and you pay attention uh, where I land with my left foot. So first we're going to do one where I throw the ball slightly behind. Okay, so I actually ended up behind the baseline there and I'm going to serve one where I throw the ball inside the court and there I finish inside the court about this much. There are also differences in how high players get off the ground. But the majority of the best servers of all time, including Serena Williams, Ivo Karlovic, uh, Pete Sampras, uh, Goran Ivanishevich, and many others, would lift off about this high uh, after the serve. The one player that we've all seen uh, thousands of times serving in slow motion is Roger Federer who has a very high liftoff. And around some serves it appears that Federer uh, can get up off the ground about this much. Does the power on the serve come from the legs? I'm going to say yes and no. And it's kind of a complicated question and it's a complex answer. So let's first start uh, with the fact that I can match my top speed on my serve without using my legs at all. That is true. So let me demonstrate. I can get up to 80 to 90 percent of my my top speed without using my legs at all. Okay there so I, I did come up with the back, back leg but I didn't leave the ground with both legs and I served that one pretty hard. Now let me try now a normal serve but I do allow my legs to lift off the ground and let's see what happens. When it comes to the speed there really wasn't much of a difference there and you can just go by the sound and the way it looks and maybe there was a 10 miles an hour extra uh, uh, with the serve where I allowed my feet up to get off the ground. But the way this power was delivered uh, was completely different. So let's break it down. If I do not use my legs we're basically only dealing with horizontal power. So I get here into a coiling position and I, I rotate and I swing my arm up and then around the body. So I am uh, getting power, but it comes at the compromise of my arm. I'm overusing my arm and this is very unsustainable long term. When it comes to the way these two serves felt, uh, the first one without using my legs did not feel very good. I felt a little bit of strain in my shoulder and didn't feel good on my arm uh, while the second one it was very effortless. When we don't allow our front leg to go up in the air and uh, we're basically just utilizing horizontal power and I'm going to demonstrate by, by hitting a serve and just spinning in a circle. So you see there I'm really not going forward on that serve I'm just basically spinning horizontally around my body like this and I'm missing out 
on the two other power sources, uh, which is the upward power and the forward power, uh, that are generated by hitting a serve where both feet lift off the ground. When we allow our front leg to go uh, up into the air, we are unlocking our maximum power potential. And therefore, our arm, uh, as it makes contact and finishes, uh, will feel very little strain. And this type of serve is very sustainable. Uh, we can generate power without losing strength uh, for long periods of time. And the three power sources that are utilized by us allowing this front leg to lift up are upward momentum, horizontal momentum, and forward momentum. Are we deliberately driving our legs and pushing our legs against the ground and jumping into the serve to generate power? Well, absolutely not. Uh, this is more of a passive leg drive. And it's another action on the serve that's making our feet leave the ground. And we're going to get to what this action is later. But first, let's take a look at a very peculiar way that the feet leave the ground on the serve. If we take a look at how we leave the ground on the serve, uh, it is a very peculiar way. So, on a platform stance, we already saw that the back foot is going to come off the ground first. But the way it comes off the ground, it kind of slowly rolls up to the tip of the foot and then it starts leaving the ground and the front foot follows and it leaves the ground in the exact same way. If you try to jump in this fashion, uh, trying to roll the feet this way, uh, this would be impossible to do. So when we jump, uh, we get on the balls of our feet and then we push the legs and we go up into the air and the feet will leave the ground something like this. On the pinpoint stance is the exact same way. Uh, we, it's not as clear to see as it is on the uh, platform stance, uh, but in the same fashion we will see that the back foot will roll up and leave the ground first, and then the front foot will, will roll like this a little bit to the side and then leave the ground like this. And if we were jumping from a, a pinpoint position, again the feet would kind of violently go up in the air and it wouldn't be rolling upwards like they do uh, on the serve. If we were to deliberately jump on the serve, we would do it in a completely different way. We would actually have our upper body uh, down because this is how we uh, jump in the most effortless way. We get our upper body down and then we push the legs off the ground this way. Uh, something like this. We go up, down with the upper body and then up with the legs like this and we can generate a very easy leg drop. However, on the serve, the body is in the complete opposite position. So what's going to happen on the serve is we're going to get into a coiling position here and now the chest is going to be pointing towards the sky. We're going to get into a knee bend on our toes and this is going to be the position we were supposedly pushing off the ground from. So let me try that. I'm going to push off the ground like this and I'm having a very difficult time at generating any power from this position. You can try it at home. It's a very uncomfortable way to jump. However, if I try to uh, get onto this step on a regular serve, you're going to see this is going to be a very effortless uh, process and there's another action of this serve uh, that's allowing me uh, to leave the ground in a much more effortless way. So let me try a serve and I'm going to try to end up on this step uh, after contact. The main factor for us uh, leaving the ground effortlessly without even trying is the tremendous momentum that's being uh, generated by our torso trust. So the way the torso thrust is this way. The chest will point up to the sky like this. And now when the racket drops, you're going to start straightening this torso this way. And this happens in such a violent way that the racket can uh, accelerate up to over 100 miles an hour on the professional players. So when we do this movement in a very, very powerful way, this force is so great that not only does it create racket speed, but it also allows our feet to get off the ground. The legs do play a big part in the serve. This is why I'm not advocating uh, to not use the legs. Uh, the legs will make this, what I like to call a C shape of the body uh, prior to the acceleration phase uh, possible. Uh, so if we try to bend our, if we keep our legs straight like this and we don't get on our toes, and we try to bend our upper body backwards to create upward momentum, uh, this feels very awkward. So we don't really get to go up uh, that fast. But if we, uh, in the same position, have our uh, knees slightly bent and we get into our toes, 
like this, we see that it's very, very easy uh, to get the C uh, shape of the body. And this is what is going to uh, allow the body to generate even more upward momentum. So it's very important uh, that you get into a knee bend, that you get on your toes and you try to get your chest as far up to the sky as you can depending on your flexibility and now from here uh, the legs will very effortlessly uh, go up off the ground like this. Another reason why we're definitely not uh, actively uh, jumping or pushing off the ground is that no human can uh, sustain uh, the same height off the ground for long periods of time. Uh, tiredness is going to set in and there's going to be differences in how high we jump. Just imagine at the professional levels players uh, play matches that are five uh, or six hours long. Uh, if we were indeed jumping on the serve, uh, the, these players will lose all their strength uh, towards the end of the matches. However, most of the top servers of all time, uh, they serve their best towards the end of the matches. And you can see that in the Wimbledon match between Isner and Mahout that lasted 11 hours. Uh, both of the guys were serving aces until the very end. Furthermore, if we were indeed actively jumping, it would make the timing of the serve uh, very difficult. So in addition to uh, tiredness setting in uh, on long matches, we'd also have a very inconsistent serve because the va variable amounts of heights we'd be able to generate uh, if we were actively jumping. Is the passive leg drive something that we should practice? Absolutely yes. You gotta make sure that you get all the core components so that the feet uh, can lift off the ground. Uh, number one, you wanna be on your toes as you begin uh, to get into the C shape. And number two, you have to have a knee bend. How low of a knee bend? Uh, it's gonna depend on the individual. Some players can bend very low. Other players have a hard time coming out of a knee bend that's too low. So number one is on the toes. Number two is knee bend. Number three is we have to get the chest up towards the sky. And when the ball's up in the air, maybe at the 12 o'clock position, we can line up the ball uh, with our chest like this. And then when we're getting ready to uh, drop the racket and accelerate, uh, we're gonna start going up like this, uh, very violently. You can practice this going from the C shape, straightening up like this. And you can see that there's force being generated, even me doing it slowly. So if you imagine doing a serve, and you serve hard, you're gonna very easily and effortlessly get off the ground. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the section below. I will be happy to respond. Uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.